Walter Gray was born in Newton, Mississippi and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Mr. Gray's parents cut the hair of the boys and the family to save money. He was inspired by both parents to learn the trade. As a young man, he enrolled at Moeller Barber School in Chicago, and after graduation, he found immediate employment at the barber shop across town. While working in Chicago, he gained business experience and developed his skills as a barber. Shortly after marriage, he looked for opportunities outside of his trade to support his growing family. Mr. Gray visited Waterloo, Iowa and found employment at John Deere Company. After working at John Deere for more than 10 years, he volunteered for a layoff to open a barbershop in his community. Gray's barbershop flourished and he became well known for being one of the best African-American barbers in Iowa. When and where were you born? I was born in Newton, Mississippi, 1939. Newton, Mississippi? Yes. Wow, okay, all right. What, what was it like growing up in Mississippi? Well, I left there at, at age five, so uh, I don't know that much about it. It was beautiful. Okay. Uh, and we lived in a government project uh, type modern uh, buildings. My dad was a, a railroad worker and as such, we were, uh, we had those uh, modern facilities, unlike the shotgun houses ah, that I'd heard okay. so much about, you know. <laughs> uh, but at, after age five, uh, we went to uh, Chicago with the great migration. Uh, okay. After the war, all the uh, soldiers and everyone was on the move. And so I, I more or less grew up there in Chicago. Tell me about how you got into uh, the barber industry. Tell me about your first haircut. When did you, when, you know, when did you? Oh, that's interesting. Okay. <laughs> because first haircut. My first, my dad was the uh, barber in the family. He cut all the kids' hair. And uh, so during my graduation from grammar school, I, I had my first professional haircut. And the, uh, the barber just completely messed my hair up from okay. what I told him. I gave him instructions. And the guy just cut it the way he wanted to. And so I rushed back home uh, and recut it, used my dad's clippers uh, in order to take pictures for that afternoon. And so my brothers and cousins and all the, all the kids in the neighborhood, you know, they kind of liked uh, what I did. And uh, they wanted a haircut. So mm -hmm. I ended up that weekend cutting about three or four heads of hair. And the next w weekend they came back, you know. And uh -huh. so. Uh, people start coming on such a regular basis. I said, well, 50 cent, you know. Okay, I'll, 50 cent, huh? Uh, and, and then the, uh, some of the dads uh, started coming around and they were sending the kids there regularly. And so around, this was in 1954. Okay. By 1956, I had such a regular clientele that I literally went into business uh, in one of the uh, side rooms. My mom, she uh, allowed me to go in there and, uh, and set up a barber shop. And mm -hmm. so uh, then I did that for the next three or four years. Uh, and in 1960, I had worked enough that I saved enough to uh, go to barber school. So you, did your father, did he teach you how to, because you said he was, he was the barber in the family. Okay. He cut did, the hair in the family. He cut the hair in the family. Yes. Okay. So this he wasn't a good barber. <laughs> he wasn't <laughs> a good barber. That's why my brothers and, and everyone <laughs> then uh, elected me, you know. Okay. But uh, my mom was actually a better barber. Than she that. was. So, okay. Yes. So uh, uh, your, your parents cutting your hair was this? Um, was this? A way to save money? It was or, out or, of uh, necessity. Okay. Economically, uh, uh, we really couldn't afford to have four boys getting their haircuts. You know? Four boys. Yes. Okay. All right. So your mother, your father would, would, would switch off and cutting the hair and take turns. Yes. And your mother was the better. She was of, better. She at was the it, better of the two. You know, my father, you know, took charge. He thought that was a man, manly thing to do, but <laughs> we preferred my mom. <laughs> yes. And so um, here you are, uh, you, you graduate from, an, the, the gra it was an eighth grade ceremony, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. And you're, you're cutting your, your hair for the first time. 
Yes. Um, did, did you get any, f so it, it just naturally came to you? Yes. Did it? Or? Worked at it. Uh, if it's something you don't like, then then change it, then work at it. And uh, that's simply how haircut works. It's, uh, it's not a trade, it's a profession like doctors, lawyers, or sculptors. You work at it until you get it the way that you think that it's right. And uh, so you have to use your own uh, talents uh, in order to achieve that. With the success at such an early age that you were having with, with cutting hair, did, did you envision yourself being a barber, being, you know, owning a business, you know, growing up, owning a business, uh, and being successful at it? I always wanted to own my own business, and I, I, I saw where it might be possible because as I uh, developed the skills, and, and it was a matter of supply and demand. If people keep coming with money in hand, mm -hmm. of course, then you, you, you realize that maybe you, know, you have something. And if I uh, went to school, then uh, I could uh, increase my uh, uh, talents and increase the money. Okay. And so, yes, it was a natural progression. Let's talk a little bit about that, because you, you would go on to school and you would you know, you'd make it legal, everything you were doing, you'd get the license. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about that. Where did you go to school at, when, and how? I went to uh, Moeller Barber College in Chicago. It was, in fact, the first barber college in the nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, um, uh, it was a, on the uh, downtown section in the, uh, what they call the uh, tramp section or or where the homeless people, I should say, they used to call them that, uh, but uh, the homeless. Okay. And, and, and we would cut the homeless uh, hair. And uh, because then the school uh, uh, would uh, charge them very little money, if any, sometimes. And so, and in addition to that, we would go to the hospitals. The school would send the uh, students to the hospitals to cut the uh, people's hair there that needed it. And, um, so I progressed pretty fast. Out of the uh, 19 or 20 students that was there, I was the only black one. Okay. And uh, then I had uh, about half the clientele. Uh, I was doing hair wow. at, at such a rate mm -hmm. that I paid the first uh, month or the second month uh, tuition. Mm -hmm. And I was given the rest of the course free because of the amount of money that I was bringing in. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but of course, I had to approach him about that. Uh -huh. you know? So, uh, <laughs> no, uh, so he willingly says, uh, "Yeah, well, you can have the rest of the course free. You just continue to do what you're doing." Right after barber school, w would you go work for someone else, or would you start your, going to, to business for yourself? Well, uh, the uh, the owner of the school he offered me a barber shop. But I, I declined uh, because I didn't want to work in that area. And, and so I uh, went to work uh, for uh, a fellow, Art, Art Draper, and uh, he had a barber shop there. And within a few months, I was the manager. And uh, I managed that until I got drafted for the military. And you said you, would, you were drafted into the military. Yes. Uh, shortly after that. It would cut you would cut your barber career short for that time period, and you. Well, it would seem so. Okay. But um, when I was in the military, I became the uh, battalion uh, barber. That's the uh, uh, unit. The unit would have a fund that they would do uh, recreational things uh, with, and they had the use of it, and uh, so they set up a barber shop for me, uh -huh. and uh, so I would cut hair uh, from eight in the morning until um, oh, about uh, four in the evening, unofficially, of course, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my job, uh, I was a communication specialist, a field communication specialist, but I, I very seldom worked at it uh, when we were uh, in the uh, barracks. Mm -hmm. But if we went out on field trips, of course, then I did my communication jobs. But other than that, I cut hair in the barbershop. Uh, your experience would extend to, into the service. This, this yes. is great. Yes. So then, once you would leave the service, um, would you go? Would you go to Chicago? Would you return to Chicago? I return. Uh, return back to the job. By law, uh, if you're drafted, 
wherever you were drafted from, uh, that company had to uh, then give you that exact same job back. It was a requirement of the government. And so, of course, I went back to managing. Stayed there a year uh, and uh, then bought my own shop. Okay. But uh, it was, I stayed there in order to just get um, my feet back on solid ground and, and look around to see what I really wanted to do and uh, find a location, and I did. And I opened up uh, my own barber shop. Tell me about Waterloo. Here you are in Chicago, and what would what events would uh, develop or transpire that would cause you to leave Chicago and come to Waterloo? Yes, interesting. The um, uh, natural came into vogue, and uh, Jackson Five had uh, the big uh, naturals, and so every every everybody wanted one, and. Uh, so people didn't want the haircut, they, they, they wanted more hair. And I looked around, this is five or six years later, and decided that it's time now to maybe go somewhere else while there's a lull in this business. And uh, my wife had, um, at that time, I, I'd gotten married, okay. and um, my wife uh, had a friend in Waterloo, and I brought her here for the weekend, and she, uh, we got here Friday afternoon, and I was going to go back Sunday morning, but I liked the place. Uh, it um, had a charm about it. It's not the best looking place, but uh, mm. uh, it was something <laughs> right. that, that, that I, I, I kind of liked the people and the, uh, and the surroundings. And so, and the opportunity of working at John Deere's was another okay. draw for us. So I uh, rented a a house, rented a shop, and went back, and my mom says, oh boy, did you go crazy? You, know, mm. you took your first uh, uh, vacation, like, and, and, and you, you, you're gonna leave? So she thought it was um, kind of foolish on my part, mm. but uh, I saw something here, and uh, it turned out to have been true. Uh, I'm very happy, and I'm happy that we made the move. Mm. And so, so we have we have the afro, and the and the curl. Is that right? Yes. The, okay. The afro <laughs> and, the, and then the curl. It's okay. The, the, the afro. To, we have the afro to think then. Yes. The afro or the natural here you call it right. The natural. Okay. Or the afro, to, yes. to thank for mm -hmm. uh, having you come to Waterloo. Mm -hmm. Then and, and also you said John Deere was was an was an attraction, important yes. attraction for you. Yes, absolutely. W what would you do at John Deere, and and how long would you would you work there? I approached the uh, individual about my application, and he said, well, yes, uh, there are some jobs because uh, uh, janitorial, but he says uh, that, that you overqualified for that, Mr. Gray. He says, I wouldn't dare offer you that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was working uh, out at Martin Marietta in LaPorte City, uh, and I was making seven ninety five. Okay. And I asked him how much did it pay, and he said it was paying uh, roughly about ten, ten fifty. Okay. Uh, so I told him I would take it for the ten fifty. Right. Now during your time there, it's my understanding, you know, John Deere was, you know, known for laying off, uh, for the layoffs, and a layoff would hit. <coughs> correct. Yes. And that's this, correct. this would, um, this this would be the point in which you would go into the barber business, this would be your, this would, this would be the event that would lead to a permanent stay into the barber business. Yes, that's, that's business. correct. I volunteered uh, for a layoff, uh, wow. Wow. and I took an early uh, layoff, and uh, about a year later then people started uh, being laid off in mass, ah. and I had, by that time I had set up the barbershop Knowing that and, uh, that these people were going to need uh, haircuts, and um, and they were going to be out, and the storefronts and the uh, business opportunity would uh, dwindle uh, if I waited, and so that's why I got out early, and set it up. It became successful uh, right off the bat. Okay. Uh, as um, I uh, cut one individual's hair, then they would tell people about it, or someone would ask about, you know, how their hair looked and ask who did it. I also, um, uh, to stimulate uh, interest, I had the storefront on 4th Street, 
I would put out um, billing material. I covered all the windows and with paper, and they would ask, what's going to be in there? What's going in there? I'd say, well, you have to wait until I open the doors. Okay. And so rumors were flying all around the neighborhood. Well, it's going to be a jewelry store, or maybe it's going to be a little uh, photo, photo shop, or, and then mm -hmm. some would say a barber shop. And uh, yeah. so they would stop and ask, well, what's going to be here? You know, Because Wadalooans are curious about their neighborhoods anyway. Mm -hmm. And so I just let the rumors fly. Okay. And that mm. piqued the uh, interest of most of the people in the neighborhood. So when I opened the doors, of course, then uh, those who had said barbershop uh, were eager to uh, prove that point, you know. Uh -huh. uh, so free uh, <laughs> uh, advertisement, more or less, you know. Uh -huh. And so that's, I, I think that was another reason why it, it uh, kind of took off real fast. Uh, and we worked hard at it, uh, and that kept it going. Now, as far, as far as your, I mean, because here you're coming to Waterloo, um, you open a barbershop. There were there were already barbershops that were existing. Uh, for example, Pep's Barber Barbershop Pep's and Fraser and, and Fraser. Mm -hmm. So here you're you're coming in, uh, setting up setting up your shop. <clears throat> um, would 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 how, how did what did you think about your competitors? You know, Pep. Did you ever? confiding to him for any advice? Uh, what about Frazier? Did you ever uh, confide in him or ask him for advice? Did you ever uh, work with him or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Well, I had gone to uh, Mr. Frazier prior to my going to John Deere, and uh, he said he wasn't interested in uh, hiring anyone. Okay. And uh, well, with Pep, after I got laid off, I went to him and uh, I asked about employment uh, working with him, and uh, he uh, he had a saxophone, and he would just play on the saxophone. He wouldn't say very much, uh, mm -hmm. especially after he found out I was a barber. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I went back <laughs> a couple of times, and he uh, he just played there, and he looked, and he j didn't say too much. So I kind of had the idea that maybe I should just really go ahead and get my own shop right away. That that was uh, the other motivating factor. Uh, in fact, I told him, I says, well, if I don't work here, I'll work somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so. And you did. Uh, and I did. Yeah. I opened up down the street. Uh -huh. you know, and, so, um, what, what was the address? Because I remember going to that 1611 shop. East 4th Street. 1611 East 4th yeah. Street. I remember mm -hmm. next to the church, right? Uh, next to this. the, uh, it was w it was in the gas station. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, old Preby Oil Company building. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, it was the office portion. And. Uh, the uh, and we did uh, uh, quite a bit of business because of the uh, oil, uh, the gas station, and we added to the gas station. They did quite a bit, a uh, bit of business because of the barber shop. So it was uh, a, a okay. hand wash a hand right. type of uh, thing. That's right. That's okay. And so then, okay, so you're at this location. How long? From. Uh, from uh, 83 to 93. Okay, and then you would expand. So I, I know because you'd yes. be there for the time and you yeah, relocate and you, would, and you would expand. So you had obviously a lot of success where you were located, located and you began to get a handle on the market as far as the clientele. Well, uh, my daughter uh, went to a beauty school, barber school first, and then beauty school, and she uh, uh, was coming out and so I, I saw a need to expand. I needed more room, and I bought the uh, uh, location at 211 Lynn, that's Lynn and Sumner Street, and uh, expanded it, uh, put in uh, parking. Uh, there was uh, no parking, there was dirt there in that facilities. Uh, revamped the building and, uh, and just improved it. Uh, my daughter now has the uh, uh, operate the beauty shop side, and I operate the barber shop side. You were also you worked with other uh, other youth in the community um, who've gone on and started their own businesses, uh, learning from you, studying underneath you. Um, tell me about the gentleman. Uh, tell me, give me a two. Tell me about two people that you study or you mentored uh, well, in the industry. Uh, Trent. Okay. Uh, is one. Uh, he's got his own barbershop. Uh, Bob, 
um, he uh, he came by for uh, he worked in the shop a couple of weeks. He wanted to uh, kind of learn a little bit more. Uh, and then there were barbers in Cedar Rapids that uh, came down. Uh, I would tutor them uh, a week or two. Okay. There's um, who else is there? There are a number of people that uh, uh, Chris Dickens. Uh, he okay. he was a barber that worked there. He. Uh, he was in a program, a school program, and um, and he wanted to. I encouraged him to go into barbering and and hired him. Okay. Um, there are there are a number of, of individuals that have worked in the barber shop uh, over the uh, course of these years. Tell me, tell me more about Trent. I met him. Very interesting guy. Uh, I remember when he was in the shop working with you, and now he's on his own independently. Yeah. Well, what was it like working with him? What type of guy? How would you describe his character, his attitude? Oh, his very bubbly, uh, very funny. Uh, Trent is uh, very comical, but yet a serious young man. Uh, very dedicated uh, to uh, what he's doing, and he's a, he's a very nice person. Mm -hmm. yes. And so, um, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, Eric Thompson, uh, he, he is working with you currently. He's one of your barbers working working for you, working with you. Uh, yes, with uh, Eric has been with me uh, about eight years now. Okay. And he uh, uh, he's the manager of the barbershop. Okay. Uh, at this point, I'm doing less work uh, and I'm looking to retire. And so he's kind of taking the lion's share uh, of the responsibility in the shop at this time. And also, uh, he um, uh, just kind of look after things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're teaching him the, the business side of it. Yes. Not, he learned the business side of it. This is good. This is good. Yes. And so, uh, obviously, he's having a lot of success there, uh, working with you, uh, generating a lot of business. In, in fact, I know you guys generate business, or you have always generated business. Uh, Across the state, I mean, people have come. Oh yes, yes. Tell, tell exactly. me about. You know, why well, I also want to you, talk about uh, this young man, uh, uh, Roderick uh, Higgins. He, uh, he's currently working uh, uh, with us also, and he just started a few months ago. But his business is taking off. Uh, he's doing a great job, and as a result, he's he's gaining a lot of customers. Uh, we've always attracted people from. Uh, uh, around the state, uh, from Sioux City, we've had people come in uh, from uh, Cedar Rapids. Uh, quite a few uh, of those individuals. In fact, I I had a shop there and tried to encourage um, barbers to go uh, and work there. I maintained it for about a year and a half, but uh, no one was really interested in uh, from here leaving, going there. Uh, so I eventually closed it. But uh, we, we have people from Minneapolis, uh, many of the Waterlooans that spread out uh, to uh, these uh, neighborhoods or different lo localities always come back. Uh, Cedar Falls, you know, we have all those people. So, uh, yes, uh, we, we're not short on customers. Yeah, <laughs> I you know, because, you know, I've, I've heard, I know people in Des Moines who would come. You yeah, know, the yeah, they, they would come for a special yes. occasion if they had to get, you know, a, yes. a perfect haircut. They mm -hmm. would make that trip from Des Moines. They would make it from Davenport. Yes. Um, I have friends who went to St. Ambrose who would come and to make, to get that perfect haircut. So, mm. uh, well, thank you. You know, we try hard. We yeah. don't know if it's perfect, but, <laughs> but uh, uh, we're not lacking on trying, mm -hmm. and that's one of the uh, things that I think people realize that that we put our all into it. You know, mm -hmm. we give them their money's worth. Let's let's talk a little bit about some of the social leaders. Excuse me, the the political leaders, the uh, the educators uh, from oh, the community who come. Basically, it's uh, at one time or another, all of the uh, individuals uh, within in Waterloo have been through. I, I really don't like to mention names because if you leave someone out, okay, of course, uh, you know you can. Uh, hurt feelings, but, um, okay. but no, I, 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 I will throw that. out. Yeah. Um, um, Walter Reed, he just left. Um, he was a, a 
prominent cus, uh, customer. His wife brought all the kids, uh, each one that was born, to just bring them to the, to the shop. And uh, so we've cut that family's hair. Uh, Mr. Porter, in fact, I, I just visit uh, him. I, I go to his house now to cut his hair. Okay. Uh, he was, he was um, uh, such a support of, of the shop. Uh, we would, uh, he would advertise things for us and we would um, support the, uh, the radio station from the inception. So um, I'm very um, uh, uh, fond of uh, uh, the, uh, Mr. Porter and hope that he can uh, recover uh, and be back with us in the community also. There are, there are a number of individuals. Uh, okay. Well, um, you mentioned Walter Reed, you know, a great guy. Um, I've been to barbershop with at the same time. Mm -hmm. a real, real good guy. Uh, in fact, he is he is one of many people who are on uh, your wall of fame. Because oh. you go into the barber, you know, you oh, have this yes. this wall here with these photographs, newspaper clippings of people in the community who you know who are doing things. Yes. Uh, what inspires you to create the wall? And what does the wall mean to you? Well, uh, people uh, in the community really didn't have an outlet. Uh, they would. Uh, accomplish many things and so I started posting little things from the paper and it kind of grew out of that now I've got a wall full of uh, things and uh, and I, I'm encouraged to take it down and change it from time to time but sometimes I, I, I don't do that as often as some people would like but uh, yes uh, I try to have the current uh, points of interest uh, up there, uh, of, of especially about personalities. I like personalities, and there are a number of uh, uh, things on that board that uh, you probably I've noticed you looking at several times. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. the wall is a good centerpiece. I like I like the wall. I think it's a good idea. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, an article, an article in the Courier. Uh, entitled African American Perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, they previewed uh, Eric Eric Thompson, one of your barbers. Yes. And uh, he's, he made front page real nice shot of him cutting another gentleman's hair. Hair, and and the the dialogue, the article is really focused on some of the dialogue that takes place within the barber shop. Yes. Uh, we've known that the barber shop, especially in the African American community, is kind of a, a hub or a center for conversation and, and, and dialogue and, and getting, expressing one's ideas, you know, while you're waiting for the haircut. Tell, tell me about, you know, tell me about some of the, the opinions or why do you think that is? Why do you think the barbershop is, is, a, is a setting for people to express themselves? Well, it's a natural gathering, uh, especially for the black community. It's, it's the one place that they can come and uh, meet and, and discuss current uh, issues, the uh, problems. It's a place where they can relax. Okay. And so that's one of the reasons why it's a hub uh, in a sense for, rather than just say a tavern. You know, okay. uh, people, um, they discuss all type of things and, uh, and friends meet up that Normally, they, or associates that they wouldn't see in other settings, they they, they can see there in, in the black barber shop. That that was one of the reasons why I wanted a larger shop, also, because the one on Fourth uh, Street was small, and but it, at the current uh, location, it's large enough that an individual can uh, watch TV and not be disturbed, or another group can talk, uh, and. Um, and several people can sit sit there, or uh, there's a section where they can uh, an individual can read magazines, the paper, and so it, it's kind of a, a all in all for the black uh, community, and plus get the haircut at the same time. So people naturally gravitate to black barber shops. It's um, uh, not only a black barber shops are hubs, but uh, I think all barber shops. Uh, it's an American tradition. And uh, America seemed to love their barbershops, mm -hmm. and Waterloo is no exception. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> Why do you think your 
what, what would you say would be the, the key to your success? Why does your barbershop stand out from the others and your competitors? We are sincere, we work hard, uh, we really try to uh, listen and to cater to people. Uh, we, we try to give them uh, their money's worth and people desire that. It's a relaxed atmosphere. Uh, in, in today's world, of course, um, uh, we know there are bad, bad elements in every community and, uh, but I try to minimize uh, the, those things in my shop. Uh, everyone is invited, but I try to minimize uh, uh, rough talking or, or cursing or anything of that sort. And so people can relax. Uh, we, we, we have church uh, people, we have uh, people from uh, uh, professional individuals. So everyone feel free there. Um, I try to discourage people from hanging around. It's not always possible, you know, because we cater to all individuals. And, but uh, by and large, we're re respected by everyone. And uh, I'm very thankful for that. But we work at it. Okay. I appreciate you making the time to come sit and, and share your life story with me, uh, the business, uh, all your success because uh, you are a community leader, definitely. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, and thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yes.